Four Midwest Guys presents... People have heard the stories. They've read the articles. But they've never seen... Marvel DC King! Hello, this is Marvel DC Kings from 4 Midwest Guys, where we talk about various Marvel and DC TV shows, news from the movies, things along those lines. Uh, with me today is Brian or B. Willie and Angenbauer. What's up, man? What's going on, man? Not much. How's it going? Pretty good. Aaron's hosting. Yeah. yeah. Moving up, my little Hosting brother. duties. Moving up in the world. Yeah, it's going to be a very slow progress through all the scenes or through all the shows and onto the news. No, no, not at all. It'll be a very slow transition to everything. You may be the next Walter Cronkite. <laughs> no, no. You know, and that's the way the, way the Marvel Universe crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. We'll see how it goes. All right. Might be DC Universe, depending on the week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't know. Uh, so, first up on the show, we had the premiere of Powerless this week. Uh, any opinions on how it went so far? Oh, it was bad. Well, in my opinion, it was bad, but it had to, it had to give a lot with the uh, at the pilot. It had to introduce so much in order to even get you started. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'll give it another episode or two just to see if it stays the same or if it picks up the pace a little bit, but yeah. it just felt really dry. Like, it tried too hard and didn't connect. Yeah, it seemed kind of forced in the first episode. Yeah, I, I agree. It was, um, I don't know, it was like the jokes they had fell flat, I thought, mm. and it just seems like they're they're trying to do a situational situational comedy when there's not, not enough to do a situational comedy with in the pilot anyway. So. Yeah, well it also seems like they're borrowing pretty heavily from a lot of other things. Like you do see some of the jokes that seems kind of community-esque, mm-hmm. other things that are kind of very similar to Better Off Ted, uh it really seems kind of generic and one-dimensional with some of the characters as well. Um, yeah, I think it was almost missing, like, I don't know, almost like the other shows, like, um, uh, what's the one with the, about the Millennials? Um, oh, uh, the, the Great, great Outdoors. In, the great, great, great Indoors. The Great Indoors. Yeah, yeah okay. it, even that I think outdoors. has, like, musical cues or something in with the jokes and stuff. I, I don't mm. know if that's part of it or what. You, it, do you it's, think, like, you, this would do better for laugh track? Like, if you were kind of prompted a little bit, you would have reacted Maybe just a jokes. little bit. Maybe not, not like, overkill like, like Night Court used to be back in the days. I'm yeah, kind of it, just like those old Roseanne Night Tracks <laughs> right, or Laugh right. Tracks. I don't, it just... I don't know. It, it's it's uh, it, it's definitely not. It's not coming across as a much of a comedy. It's like a, I don't know what to call it. It's I don't know. It, it had its moments where like I think there were some of the jokes that kind of worked. Um, a lot of sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. Could use better sarcasm, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah. Like sense. it. It definitely comes across as forced and without really relating to the characters. Like they're all kind of one dimensional still. So. Yeah, and again, it's just a pilot, and it's a 30-minute pilot at that, which in mm. reality is, what, a 20-minute pilot. So Yeah, once you take in the commercials and all that. Right, so, well, we'll see. Give it some time. All right, rock on. And then, I guess, moving on to the CW, we have last week's episode of The Flash. Uh, and I think you actually like this one because it has a nod to George Lucas, right? Uh, actually, that's the uh, Legends of Tomorrow oh, episode. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm getting this all confused. You can get it a little yeah. mixed up. It's all right. It, yeah. You're still so new. many crossovers. So <laughs> there are to get them all straight. a lot of crossovers. Yeah, um, yeah it was. Uh, I don't know. It, I guess so far with the Flash, it's been. I guess all shows are doing this now. Like they have their first half of the season theme, mm. and now we're into the second half of the season theme. So the first half was kind of all about him in Flashpoint and the results of it. And mm. I guess they try to tie that off and try to tie, to tie it together. And then now they're moving on to where Barry's been flown, thrown into the future. Mm. And now he's trying to prevent Iris's death by Savitar. Yeah, I can definitely see your point on that. Like, it's kind of resolved a lot of the issues that came out of the Flashpoint paradox, or it doesn't seem to be addressing them to the same extent they used to. Right, it's kind of like it was just... It was very short, and now they've moved on to another thing. So it's almost like... Barry screwed up by going into the past, and now he's gone into the future, and he's screwing up again, or he's trying to deal with mm-hmm. um, deal with that. Well, it's yeah. not so much that he's trying to screw up, he's trying to change the future. Right, yeah. which it creates its own set of problems. Well, I mean, 
the thing that's kind of weird about this, and you have it in a bit in both episodes, is that you pretty much have the first half of the season talking about how much you messed up by changing the past and how that changed like the present and the future. And then you have this current arc where it's like, can we really change the future or is it predetermined? And it seems almost a weird question to ask for this show, doesn't it? Well, yeah, because well, you think about it, the way he did it before was he changed the past and it was a butterfly effect that, that happened. Mm-hmm. And then now it's, can I mold the future into what I need it to be mm-hmm. instead of changing one event and then just watching it ripple? Mm-hmm. Can I change multiple events to change what I want to change? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just found it weird because you actually have like him. I think this is actually going into this week's episode where he's talking to um, JW about like whether he can actually, like whether future is predetermined. Oh, HR. Yeah, HR. Yeah. And I just it was, seems like such a weird conversation to have for a show that's already dealt so much with time travel and has you know a character with so much experience with it. Well, I mean, I think it was because it's a different age, it's different Wells, mm. and he's, he's talking to him and he's asking, you know, do you think it's set in mm. stone or can it be changed? Mm. And he was like, well, you have to watch what you change because everything's a domino effect and mm. they had that whole domino, you know, that right, domino thing. The dominoes, yeah. yeah. It was, it, I don't it's not, you got to think... If you had super speed and you can go back and change time, that's basically what they're kind of dealing with now. Yeah. Um, instead of just you know going around and just saving people because obviously you you know you could do that, but yeah, uh, it might become a tad repetitive pretty mm-hmm. early on. But every, but I mean that's every season, right? I mean mm-hmm. every season of Flash is dealing with some sort of problem or overlying yeah, issue. Yeah, I mean whether Barry did it or not. Since you know. like the first season, it's pretty much every season starts with like almost a reset in some way. Yeah, it were a problem. Lately, it's been a problem Barry has caused or has mm. seen in this case. Now mm. that we're going with the opposite, you know, trying to change the future. Yeah. From Do you the like the, how it's kind of transitioned from focusing on Flashpoint to preventing Iris's death, sort of thing? No, because I honestly wanted a little bit more Flashpoint because Flashpoint is such a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. After we get past this season, I kind of want them to go in a little bit of a different direction than than it being something Barry has seen or done. Mm. It feels like so, like maybe focus more like on like other like fl- speedsters like Wally West or like other sort of type well, of villains. Kind of jumping something in. else that causes the paradigm or the overall theme for the the season or half season in that case. I don't know. Mm. It just seems like I mean I know Barry's the Flash and it's the show is called the Flash, but it's. For me, it's getting to be a little redundant. I mean, it's it's still interesting and still cool. It's just it's not quite as fresh. I feel like it's been well. I mean, we get we're we're getting ready to have two episodes with Gorilla Grodd again. Mm -hmm. Um, so that that'll be fantastic because I love that parallel right between the between like the big brute force and the you know speedster. Yeah, like so you're kind of hoping like you see like an appearance of like Solomon Grundy down the line, like that sort of character. Exactly. Like like I think we we kind of saw. A Grundy type character. Mm-hmm. We've seen some things that are a little similar, yeah. Right, and then with, with Grodd, we're we're supposed to see Grodd, and we're supposed to see like one of the good gorillas from that yeah, like, Earth, whatever Earth Two. Like you almost have like an invasion sort of thing. Yeah, so you're gonna have you're gonna have that, and I'm not sure if it's gonna happen on Earth One or Earth Two, mm-hmm. um, with the way they're talking on the the synopsis. But I mean, so we're gonna we're gonna have those battles with his. Mm. You know his his villains from his comics, yeah. Which will be, I think will be kind of. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. especially with Grodd because not only is he a brute, but he's also a very intelligent one as well. So I think yeah. that makes for a very interesting comparison. Yeah, and I, th- and I think what happens is when we have you have these season long arcs, mm. we haven't really we haven't really focused on anything but that season long arc yet. There hasn't been that break. The not mm. not even just a break, just the extra insert of a an extra villain. Here mm-hmm. and there, it, it's just been that Savitar. Yeah, so far it's been Savitar and Alchemy, and uh, it really hasn't transitioned too much outside of a few small people here and there. Like you had the one psychic child earlier on in the season, right? And like this, this week was the um, the vibe esque right. bounty the hunter gypsy. Vibe versus vibe. I gypsy. Like the introduction. I so did I. I like that too. Yeah, and, I and, and the fact that Cisco actually went full vibe. Yeah, like he actually used his powers. He used his powers, throwing stuff. You know. Like, do you actually expect him to be, like, more hands-on going forward because of, like, episodes like this? Like, is this episode setting him up for more? Yes, I I mean, I think you're going to keep seeing him go farther and farther into the vibe character Mm -hmm. that we saw from Earth 2. 
Except not maybe I mean not so much a villain. Yeah. No, I think I that's going to be Caitlin. Obviously, I think it's well, pretty, pretty possibly much it, it does. If you look at how they're setting up like the headline things, it definitely seems like they're trying to kind of the goal. One of the goals is to transition her away from Killer Frost freaking out, and that's one of the reasons you have um, the actor that plays um, Alchemy and I can't remember his Harry name. Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah Harry like Potter, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from the Harry Potter series. Yeah, I can't I remember. Him. I just like, call him Harry Potter name. guy. They introduced him onto the team, and like I don't know if that's going to backfire on them or not. Oh, I think I, it will. It will. Like, you I think, think he's going to yeah. relapse into alchemy. I think that. Yep. Yeah, I think that's what's going to be. I think that's what's going to be the cause of Caitlin turning into Killer Frost, right. because we already know that we're going to get uh, Robbie Amell is but coming back to play Firestorm again, mm. the bad Firestorm, not the good Firestorm. Well, do you think there's a possibility that with you know? Vibe and Gypsy being like prominent parts of this episode, that we might actually be going into more like alternate universe versions, like world hopping. Because you talked about the last episode, and apparently on the uh, one Earth, like actually interdimensional travel becomes this huge ban. Right. So like maybe it's not actually the Killer Frost from this Earth, but another one it along could, with Firestorm. It, it could be. It yeah, could be the. That could be the. It could be a killer, wrench, yeah. It could yeah. be killer frost from a different, different, mm. different Earth coming like maybe through. Maybe that's like something that follows through on the Gorilla Grodd arc, sort of thing. Could be. I don't know. Um, also, with the last episode, do you think they were actually hinting that uh, Harrison Wells from a different planet did more than just interdimensional travel? Because there was some weird wording for how Gypsy kind of set it up at some parts. No, I don't think he did anything other than because she she talked about. Um, they got invaded by some other some other Earth, Earth. Mm. Yeah. and they banned all inter, interstellar travel or whatever mm. it was, interdimensional travel. Yeah. And that's what he did, so that's why she came to get him. I don't think he did anything other than that, because the only reason why she was able to catch him because he kept reading his book back. Mm. So it made it seem like that's all he really was, was just a narrative, just yeah. you know, writing okay. books and stuff. However, it was kind of cool that you know she's like, I'm, I'm just going to say you didn't live... And then she also said basically that she would see Cisco again. Yeah, so you yeah. kind of hope to see her as a character coming yeah, back. Yeah, I really hope on. she comes back. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's I a- mean, we've had kind of one off characters, though. Like, you had Hawkgirl in The Flash at one point, and then she was on Legends, and now is just kind of off the show. So, like, hopefully it's not that sort of scenario. Right. No, I kind of like her. I like the idea of a, almost like an interdimensional cop, almost, because that's what she is, or a bounty hunter, even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she's, she's a bounty very hunter. close. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it made for a kind of a fun dynamic for the episode. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it's a good balance for Cisco, although I think Cisco's a little corny around her, but that's I think that's part of it's, his character, too. But. I think Cisco's kind of the corny character for the show in yeah. regards to, like, he's your main character for using references, and that's mm-hmm. clearly something all the CW shows yeah. kind of have right now. Um, but I thought this uh, last episode was a good catalyst, like we were saying before, for him to become full-on vibe. Mm-hmm. Because we see whether it's this Caitlyn or if it's Caitlyn from Earth 2 that he's battling Killer Frost as full on vibe. Yeah. So he had to make that transition at some point mm-hmm. in order to, for that reality to become true. Right. And then so. the, other, the other thing I was going to mention, one of, you know how they had the um, when they when they used Cisco's power, Vibe's power to kind of look into what Barry saw mm-hmm. right? In the future, yeah. To Vibe and see the see what he saw and they read the the Things across the bottom. Yeah, yeah. the news. And one yeah. said, you know, f- the Flash gets what you call gets the guy. So he Blender. had. So he yeah, So he had Wally get him, and then the other one was you know Gorilla Grodd mm-hmm. makes entrance or whatever it said. Uh, and yeah, you have Gorilla Grodd. Then you have something about Music Meister has a book deal. And then uh, and then Killer Frost. Mm-hmm. And Joe gets honored. Joe gets honored at City Hall. Yeah. yeah. And then they also had one that said. Um, Whatchamacallit, the Star Labs Museum closes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which we know is going to happen because the, the Star Labs Museum turns into the Flash Museum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Based on comics. Yeah. Well, I mean, it'd be an interesting transition and it'd be kind of nice. Or maybe they'll prevent holding that off for like a season or two, but you, it's definitely something you'd expect down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, with Plunder, though, he did have that kind of cool high-tech gun thing. Are we expecting to see that more of that? Because you did also have an arms dealer that got caught in the last episode. I would I would assume that the, the arms dealers are changing their game plan because mm. of the Flash and 
having to deal with metas and stuff like yeah, that. It was that, kind of a cool gun, though. Like, it had, like, different features. Like, it almost reminds me of, like, the uh, different sort of arrows, like, in the arrow yeah. universe. Yeah. And it had, they seem different, like, multifunctional. Yeah, like, he could change he could change it to, like, heat seekers or mm-hmm. speed, whatever you want to call it, speed force seekers yeah. or yeah. whatever. And because the bullets kind of went boomerang, came mm-hmm. right back, and oh, that was like, kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, do you think that's actually going to play a role later down the line, like the origins of those sort of technology or weapons? Because oh. they pretty much say that those are like weapon grades that military doesn't have, right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. That, but that was uh, Harrison daydreaming, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fair that enough. was from his writing. So that was part of writing yeah. his yeah. novel. But they okay. did. But they did see Harrison on top of the building with that gun. With that yeah. gun, yeah. So, you know, who knows if? But if, he didn't do anything either. That was what I. Yeah, was strange. I don't know. Well. It's and also just quick speed of time, so it's hard to say how much that was supposed to help. The other, the only thing about the whole vibing him back to the future thing um, is I don't understand uh, uh, why they don't keep doing it. So why they like don't every, just keep checking back? Yeah, back every, time every time they they change something, go yeah, back and I do mean, it again. Theoretically, you, you can know? make that like an every episode update sort of thing, right? If you really yeah, instead to. of instead of the arrow having like on arrow they have flashbacks. Yeah. yeah. Like this one just flash has speed forward, flash forward, flash yeah. forward, and they'll be like, "Damn, it's still happening." Yeah, why is this? You know, but now is this happening? has changed. Right, yeah. right. It's the butterfly f- effect in reverse, sort right. of thing. That would be, I don't know. I just thought it, it might be kind of interesting, kind of cool. but it could also kind of just paint it into like a uh, pattern that might be a little tedious. But it, it's interesting to see where it'll go. I think so. Um, so, what do you think of like Barry's plan towards the end of the last episode, where it's really talking about trying to make Wally the one that becomes faster than him? Well, I don't think it's going to backfire. I think he's he's trying to take the responsibility off his own shoulders, and mm. I think he's I think the Flash has unlimited potential, and the only thing that holds the Flash back is the Flash, and that's been over and over and over again yeah. since the beginning well, of the I series. Mean, Ooh, I don't think patterns so. where you like you oh, keep I giving know. him a pep talk and he keeps going. But well, I mean, he's always fighting himself. It's like he can always he seems to have unlimited potential, but the only thing that holds Barry back is Barry. Like he mm. looked at that graph and went, Psh, "Yeah, uh, there's no way I'm going to get fast yeah. enough." Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, British dude, you're right." You know, so I that's that's how I'm looking at. It. I don't know, so, Brian. What so, do you think? So the way I'm looking at it is, is for one. He he saw himself stand there and watch watch Iris get killed in front of him. Mm. So obviously he doesn't feel he's fast enough to get there. Oh yeah. And okay. Right. The other thing is is Barry for the longest time didn't really rely on a team. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just basically been him and then his like his backup at the place telling him what's going on. Now that he has Wally, who is like on his team, yeah, he realizes he's not doing it by himself. And he see he's like he's like wow you know you've gotten so much fast he's almost as fast as me mm-hmm. in this amount of time so if you look if you put Wally's graph next to Barry's graph his is a quicker incline his is a quicker incline so he's thinking he can get there yeah. way faster than I can so yeah, but I mean you can make an argument that's like a beginner's gain sort of thing then there's a possibility of hitting a plateau oh yeah I completely agree with that but what I'm saying is is yeah. he's probably looking at it as if I'm in front of him maybe I did, I don't see Wally coming in the other direction maybe use Wally. To come and save her. Yeah, yeah I would. I would like to. Yeah, that would be cool if they did like a tag team to save her kind of thing. Mm. Yep. Like one plays distraction, the other plays yeah. rescue. And, think, and even if Wally ends up getting faster than the Flash, even if it just be temporarily, I still think his lack of inexperience, though, to do it by himself is going to be the problem. Yeah. It's going to take both of them. Yeah, oh yeah, I don't. See, I don't see him making Wally do it by himself. I really yeah. see him as being a tag team effort. Yeah. But I think that right now, at this point, I think that's what he's he's relying on right now. But we'll see. It's a very yeah. good possibility, yeah. So, uh, do you guys want to do the episode grades like together, or like do them separately? We can do them, I think, together. What do you think? Okay. Just the last two episodes, or do you want to do them separate? Yeah, we can just do the whole like so far. So far this season, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll start. So far this season, I give it a solid uh, A minus, B plus, A minus. I mean, there's a few minor issues that drag it down, but I I'm enjoying it. Yeah. You know, overall, Brian. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an A. Um, yeah. I don't. Th- I don't. I mean, the, the only issue I saw was the Harry Potter character kind of he kind of dragged stuff along a little bit more than I don't know. He's had some a few funny jokes here and there. Yeah, but in his but but for the but for the most part, it's been kind of like a, just a, it's like a really yeah, dry the introduction for him was very bad. Yeah. So aside from that, though, he's been. I mean, the the whole show has been good, and this 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 season is 
been mm. good. We, I think we were worried in the beginning. We we're like, oh my god, it's going to reset again. Yeah, and we're like, son of a, come on, yeah. this is getting ridiculous. It was definitely a concern. Yeah, but now I'm I'm fully vested in this again, and it's I can see why we why we reset where we're at now. We I don't think we could have got here if we wouldn't have reset. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, there's a lot of those story arcs, especially with, like, Killer Frost, that you really wouldn't have without it. And I think I'm going to agree with you guys. Like, for me, this has been kind of a B-plus season. Like, I thought Plunder was kind of a shitty character, like, an episode back. But outside of that, he served his purpose of introducing kind of, like, the his gun kind of into the universe. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of cool. Uh, so, I don't know, you guys have any theories of where this is going forward? or? Um, yeah, like I said, I... I think we already kind of talked about it a little bit. I think it's going to take Barry and um, uh, Kid Flash to uh, to pick Wally. Barry and Wally is what I was trying to say to uh, figure it out to to unlock uh, to stop Savitar. I think it's because he's so much beyond probably any speedster so far. That so we've how seen. do you actually assume like he actually gets back into this universe? Like you would assume it would have something to do with alchemy, but well, they threw they threw the uh, the his portal the box or whatever it was mm. Pan- what was it yeah, the pa- box yeah might as well just call it pandora's box but into mm. the speed force just because they threw it into the speed force doesn't mean it's going to stay in the speed force but so at some point it could in like time, exit time it exits back out of the speed force and that's how he comes back that's to, okay. to me it's pretty self-explanatory i don't know so i'm going to step out on a limb okay and i'm going to say that your villain is going to be one of two people Okay. At the end of this season, it's either going to be Wally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is going to become maybe not he's not maybe not right now, mm-hmm. but he's going to become the villain. Okay. okay. Probably because you know the way him and Barry kind of have that back and forth. Okay. Or it's going to be the reintroduction of um, what you call it, Eddie. Oh, oh, that okay. brings back Reverse Flash, which I would love to see. Yeah, because because but... Eddie, Eddie was a good character on the show, and I don't know if he'll come in from a different Earth mm-hmm. or whatnot, but I think I could see him being a a villain for this season. Okay, cool. Because I'm really I'm still trying to figure out who Savitar is. Yeah, because Savitar I mean, is obviously somebody from Barry's past. Yeah, well, I mean, you do have that kind of future. habit of like the Flash always having like. The main villains being someone kind of close to him and betraying them and right. creating trust issues. So yeah, it's definitely a plausible thing. But I don't know. Can you keep doing that like every season? I mean, I don't, I don't know. But if you reset, I guess you can. Yeah, I suppose that's true. All right. So moving on to uh, Legends of Tomorrow. This is actually where we actually have the George Lucas scene that you know you personally enjoyed. I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, it's just as a Star Wars fan, I thought it was a cool little tie-in. Um, the fact that uh, because both um, the Atom and uh, Steel uh, were affected by George Lucas's movies, yeah, Steel being you found a lot of Raider, relatability in that. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He was in, he, that's when that's why he became an historian when it came to Atom. It was because of uh, Star, Wars. Star Wars. So me being a big Star Wars nut and being an Indiana Jones fan, I I just enjoyed it. I just thought it was a kind of a neat way to to put those two genres into the show and yeah. to show you know George's and I liked all the little Star Wars references how they put them in the trash compactor the mm-hmm. lines you're my only hope George blah 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 all that stuff was just um, it was just a fun episode it maybe didn't advance the plot terrible lot, maybe a little bit but I well I mean it. you do have the bit about what is it the how the medallion works and like what it's actually going towards and yeah we got that too so for me it was it was just it was a really fun episode I I I know for other people they didn't like it as much, but for me that just kind of that elevated it for yeah. me. You know, just that's the uh, what's uh, South Park called the member berries or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that gives you the nice little feel and stuff right. to it. Fair so, enough, man. Yeah, how do you like that little George Lucas throwback? Yeah, I mean, I liked it, and you know, it's funny because as you're watching it, and you're like, you know, and they're, they're talking about how George Lucas changed the lives of so many people, and you're thinking, and you're like, he did. I mean, like. Like that yeah. kind of that kind of stuff. Like, how did it change it for me? You know what I mean. Mm. And like, you're like, oh, you know, I could say that about George Lucas. Yeah. Or I could say that about like GI Joe toys. Yeah. Or you know, like all those things that were just small little influences. But in my childhood, have, like, project- yeah. Or yeah. added up more than it, you just it, think. It, in my childhood, those kind of things kind of 
changed the way I thought about things or mm. changed my dreams from being wanting to be like a veterinarian to being, you know, an astronaut. Or I mean, I didn't really want to do that, but yeah. But you know what I mean? That kind, that you, kind you of stuff. You can definitely see where like yeah. this, it could be like a bigger influence for some people over others or right. even just a small influence for Right, themselves. and so it was cool to kind of see that butterfly effect of, you know, they went back in time and changed this little bit. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, Adam and Captain Steel can't, or Citizen Steel can't, um, you know, they don't remember their stuff. And mm. I think I think Citizen Steel was what he became like a yoga instructor. Yeah. And the other one was a heart surgeon. Mm. You like, know, oh, I don't want to be a heart surgeon. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of it was kind of interesting to see that kind of that yeah, George just, Lucas played that big of a role. Yeah, it was definitely kind of amusing, kind of funny. Uh, it had some pretty decent lines throughout the episode as well. Uh, and then you kind of advance the plot because it kind of goes into that the medallion leads to like the spear that can kind of warp the like, spear of reality. destiny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's. And I mean, we are kind of cementing the Legion of Doom as the title for the villains so far. So it, it's kind of amusing in its own way as well. Yep. Um, and then moving on to the next episode, we kind of have the beginning where like you have. Um, Damien Dark kind of do the introduction, which I thought was kind of funny. Right, because, well, the, this whole episode was basically about the Legion of Doom. Yeah. And um, them forming their unit. Mm. I mean, we got, to see, we got to see them fight oh, yeah. amongst themselves, which we, you know, for those of us that watched, you know, like Justice League or um, Super Friends, mm. you, all, we, we all, we, you always saw that where... The villains, you're like, how are they getting along? And then there'd be that spot where the villains didn't get along. Where they'd all turn on each other. Yes, and we got to see that in this episode, so it was kind of cool. I don't know, I feel like you were like a pretty big era fan. Like, for that, you, I imagine this actually had like a lot more backstory and a lot more kind of interesting thing. Because a lot, both Damien Dark and Merlin both come from kind of the era verse a little bit. Right, I mean, and that, and that was the other thing. It was like, you're watching, and you're like, watching these two main villains of Arrow mm. start to form this you know, Legion of Doom. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, this is pretty cool. I mean, can you imagine seeing, um, you know, King Shark and Gorilla Grodd oh, yeah. and these three and they form this Legion of Doom versus the, the, the Justice League with oh, Arrow yeah. and, I mean, it's just... Well, I mean, it was kind of interesting just seeing, like, the two members of the League of Assassins kind of take on, you know, Reverse Flash... Well, the League of Assassins is they're, not only are they you know excellent marksmen and fighters, but they're really good strategists, mm. and that's what they did right there. And you could you could I mean it was just one of those things like nope, I want to see how this plays out. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see Lex Luthor though? Because Lex is the head of Le- the Legion of Doom. At some point, I mean, point. in some point maybe, but. We haven't really got a Lex Luthor in any of the current like, right, CW that's what I mean. shows. Though, right? the, li- the closest, like, the closest we have is like his mother. No, like, his in sister. Supergirl. His sister and Supergirl. Sister well, yeah, and mother. Not really. Uh, and and, and, and like stepsister and mother. Yeah. yeah that's well, right. his mother's the um, leader of Cadmus. Yeah. But they, but they, but they also said that Lex was in prison. Yeah. So th- in so this one, if you introduce so, him within so, the Supergirl universe, it's a good possibility. Yeah. So theoretically, he could be. Introduced the next next crossover event will be against the Legion of Doom then probably it could oh, yeah well yeah. after the musical one yeah and well, it, yeah. so it, so yeah. it could very well be you know Legion of Doom versus them and they could introduce Lex Luthor because um, we already have Superman right so yeah. they could very well introduce Lex Luthor we need the Bat but you know. yeah well, we don't that's... we don't have Batman but a lot of people say that <coughs> this Green Arrow is basically well, yeah. Batman. Well, there's always been a lot of parallels between Green Arrow and Batman as well. Yeah. But, I mean, if you go in the Supergirl universe, they introduced Guardian and made him far more Batman-like than he is in the comics as well. Right. Sorry, so, I didn't mean to throw us off tangents. Oh, no, no, it's okay. fine. Tangents happen, man. Um, so, you also have a good scene in this episode where, like, Hunter's pretty much just being tortured. They end up ripping off the tooth. Mm-hmm. But at some points, it almost seems like he's trying to play them against each other. And it seems very weird for kind of the newer alter ego. A little bit, but I mean, at this point, he's been tortured twice and hypnotized and yeah. everything else. So, you think uh, it's just like a desperation sort of thing, or maybe there's just a little bit enough left of the old Rip Hunter in there to fall back on. Maybe yeah, just and I think that's what it is because he he has the memories when he was writing the script mm-hmm. of the of the legends. Oh, right. so it's like somewhere in so his I subconscious. Think somewhere in his subconscious, thing. he knows what's going on, and he's like. Obviously, blah, blah, blah. Or it could just be that he's a movie buff because he does bring up 
Right. He's like, you know, he's like the, the good, good, bad, the, the ugly, and you're like three guys, and blah blah blah, and neither one of you are clean us, Clint Eastwood, you know. Yeah. So you're gonna neither one of you going home with the gold, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so it could be just be that he's a movie buff. He's just using yeah, his mo- movie nerdum to right. get himself out of it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. that's a fair point. So. Uh, so I don't know. There was also kind of the bit which you have the professor kind of introduce his daughter into like the like main spaceship, introduces Gideon, has her like hook up the amulet. And it's not necessarily a bad scene, but is it something where it's just, it seems like it's adding, like, an emotional element that's not necessarily necessary, or... I think it's a plot element for down the line. Yeah. I, I think that's, that, yeah, it felt a little forced, but I think they're, they're, they're trying to... I don't know, you do know. you think it's, like, a good character introduction, like, so yes. far? Yes, so far. Like, it's a character yes. you guys both enjoy? Yeah, yeah, I really actually wanted her, I was telling when we were watching it, I actually wanted her to be wrote into the show. I really thought it was going to be that way. What I think is going to happen is it was twofold. So, like, one, the professor has been very cold and dry and articulate, you know, and he's mm. he's been able to criticize other people for not being able to do stuff. Mm. Now we see that, you know, he's learned that basically like the Tin Man, he has a heart. Yeah. And, you know, so now he feels for whatever. But I think it's going to come back to bite him because I think, at some point, well, they're going to hold. They're going to get. In a previous episode, hasn't it? Like where he was almost about to be tortured or something along those lines. It's, um... Yeah, but not because of her. Okay. But I'm, what I'm thinking is going to happen is, is you're going to see something happen with her and her mm. being held hostage. And it's going to it's make gonna... him forced to like a poor decision yes. due to like an emotional element. Yes. Okay, that could be kind of cool. Um. So we also have the introduction of Black Flash in this episode and. For me personally, I thought the well, character introduction. That, have we shown him before? On Flash. On Flash. He's Zoom. Zoom, yeah. Becomes the Black Flash. Oh, okay. He becomes the Black Flash when the time rates come and get him. Okay, I didn't know if it actually showed that, or I might just be forgetting it. But. We, yeah, we, we actually saw, like, it was right at the end of the episode with Zoom. Mm. Um, we act, You actually see his face melt. Oh, okay. And kind of turn into... Like, kind of that... Black like, Flash, yeah. Or yeah. Zombie Flash, however you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So... You understand, like, what is kind of the motivation for that character? Because it clearly is chasing after a speed force thing, but is that necessarily intentionally reverse Flash? I don't think it's. Ne- I don't think think it's necessarily intentionally him. Mm. But um, the way Zoom acted, the more the more the more speed force that he killed or he could absorb mm-hmm. and become faster. And that was his only goal was to become fast. Yeah. Become the fastest. So you think it's just like that desire is just the only thing that kind of remains there? Yeah. So I, I think that's, that's the, that's the, the behind the scene thing mm. is, um, is his wanting to get more, more of the speed force. But I think Brian, as we were talking that he yeah. kind of, He's taken on that time wraith yeah, persona. Kind of, it's very so, similar. So, and because I, like you don't see him going back into like the Flash universe, right? So what I almost which is a character in a more steady stream should be easier to chase. And what I out. almost wonder is, and I just thought about this just now: what if he was able to take over the time wraiths, like he was able to kill the time wraiths, mm. and now he is the time reaper? Going through he's death he and, and getting all the speed force people that are moving mm. well either that or you can or, make the opposite argument that is the time race that kind of took over him or or to expand on that or is he the guy because technically uh, reverse flash doesn't exist is he the guy that goes around taking care of you know people that get erased from time oh it could be you know he's the he's like the reaper of time but mm. I, the only thing you I know, found that, stupid about this episode. Was the fact that he couldn't see him? He could only sense. He his could only speed sense. Force. He doesn't like, hear. He like doesn't he, see. Like he's just he could, feeling. He the could only speed sense force. or smell. Well, yeah, it was almost I like he could it detect said speed he had force. Smell. Like it's just like he senses speed force. But it was it. really weird because like he stopped. Yeah, like he doesn't run into walls all right. the time. Right, like he stopped, and then he went. Like you, like you smell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he does kind of do that. Yeah, I was actually going to go with the predator thing, but yeah, you're right. He did smell almost like he could. Sense it, yeah. yeah. It's a weird sort of like thing, a, like a hound dog. But, the, but then, like he didn't move, and he's like, I, you know, I don't see him. Like, 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 a, like from Jurassic Park. If you, you don't, don't move, move. they can't see. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of a T Rex sort of scenario. Well, yeah. I think it's well, then, just maybe not so much moving. It's just him not using the speed force. Period. Yeah. So that he couldn't track him. So, 
But it is weird because, yeah. like, he is technically blind, but you don't see him just, like, tripping over shit nonstop. Like, you kind of would if you're running that fast, right? Right. Like, you think blind? so. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, for the past couple episodes of this, what would you guys give it? Um, past couple episodes? I, I've i enjoyed both episodes, so I'd give it a solid A. So, that I really... Especially this episode, last episode was... I was leaning towards a BB plus, but seeing the zombie flash or black flash that that bumped it back up. Oh yeah, for it's me. really and kind of brings a whole new dynamic. Explains where why reverse flash keeps going away and coming back constantly. Mm. He's I, he's just been trying to outrun death mm. <laughs> essentially. So yeah, I love that great twist. Really adds depth to the show. Really ties into the show into the Flash universe. Really, because it you know at some point I could definitely see Flash trying. Oh to yeah, help him it out. definitely even adds the mythology for that show as well. Yeah, very much so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it um, probably like a B B plus. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not as high on Legends of Tomorrow as I am on Flash, mm. but um, for a show that's just starting out with cast offs from Arrow and Flash. Yeah. It's really starting to come along. I really wish that we would get um, Hawk Girl and Hawkman back. Mm. I really wish we could. I wish. I, I would like to see Hawk Girl back. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of neutral on Hawkman personally, but yeah, I just, I, I just knowing who the Super Friends are. Mm. Growing up, it's like it's you, you want those two back, and you want certain people back. Um, I'm really waiting for them to go back and save Laurel, mm. and bring Laurel back, like save her and bring her back. Right. Um, there's so many things that you could do on a show that with time, you right. know. But it's just one of those like we know that uh, Katie Cassidy, Laurel, mm. Laurel Lance signed on to be a regular on all these shows, mm-hmm. same way that um, Malcolm Merlin did. Yeah. Whatever his character, I can't remember what his name is, real name is. Well, anyway, he signed on to do the same thing, and we're like, how is he going to sign on? Right. To be a regular on all these shows, and now we know how he is. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm curious to see how Laurel Lance gets tied in because mm-hmm. I really hope it's not as the um, um, siren, mm-hmm. which is the back the bad black canary from mm-hmm. uh, Earth Two. I really hope it's not that all the well, way through. It could always definitely be an alternate Earth or an alternate timeline sort of storyline yep. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for myself, I'm going to give these last couple episodes kind of a solid B, like. For me, last season, Legion kind of went kind of slowly. Like, I don't even think I finished out the season. So, But it's really kind of picked up in the last couple of episodes, and actually the season's done really well. Um, so, switching over to Supergirl, which I think's That's ABC, right? No. No, no, no. It's CW. all on CW. All CW. Now. Oh, that's right. He's got switched over. Because we got that four-part crossover. Can't even believe I forgot that. Well, Whatever. 3.1. <laughs> anyway, we start off... Uh, Last week's episode, Supergirl Lives, and I'm pretty sure this is the one that's directed by Kevin Smith, because it yep. definitely stars his daughter at one point. Yep, it is. Yep. And honestly, takes way larger role than you would assume, but anyway. Um, I mean, you kind of have like this kind of storyline where you have a child kidnapped, and then it leads into this entire yeah. sort of like human trafficking sort of scenario. Yeah, like in space, slave world kind of thing going on. Um, I don't know if I was incredibly I, I guess i had higher expectations because i knew kevin smith directed this one yeah if you and, actually he did a flash episode and last I thought year that, that was, did really really well yeah this one kind of fell flat for me um i don't know it was uh, it was i don't know we got to go to a different planet which was fine and the dimensional gate was cool but mm. i i don't know i just didn't really I guess I just wasn't an investor. I, like I said, I was expecting a lot more. Yeah, I, I can and, definitely understand that. Last week's episode was kind of slow and kind of flat. And yeah, I mean, I've had issues with Supergirl though from the get go. It, it's it's better. It's so a, much better on the CW. Yeah, and, and I agree because I only watched. I'm great. I only watched one episode from season one, which was the Flash crossover. Yeah. But like, you actually are starting to have tension on the show. That's not just like a love triangle sort of thing. Like yeah. you have character motivations, like. It's so much better. I guess the best thing that came out of this episode was how the alien bowed to Monel. So it, it, once again, it kind revealing of hints at him being like being the prince character, the, the prince character, and therefore providing that depth. And what is he going to do? Is he going to turn? Is he not going to turn? Mm-hmm. So, so he's kind it, of providing that, hints from that. Did you not? Early did on. you? I was. Did you not get that ahead of time? Is it? I mean, this is what set it off. Was the for, for me, the other alien bowing? 
for this one, that was the major giveaway for me. That's the one that says... Like that was like the confirmation. That's the confirmation that, yeah, he's the prince and that he's got some sort of a dark checkered past. Because he's not exactly the perfect guy either. Yeah, well, he's definitely selfish. And um, right. it, clearly, if you look at like how they've shown Draxum, like it's a planet that was pretty open to doing a lot of messed up shit by you know, Krypton standards. Precisely. And it just depends how... Is he a guy seeking redemption or through Supergirl or is there an underlying motive? Is yeah. he is he on Earth for other other reasons and purposes? Yeah. Is, is he doing it? Or was he just escaping and that's where he ended up? And if, if so, is if he is there for underlying purposes, is he doing it against his will or is he doing it because he's an asshole? You know, mm. it, it, these, it lends a lot of good questions, I yeah, guess. It definitely... You question the morality of the character. Correct. And the, like the, motivation. The couple of things that I did like about this episode was the fact that we did get the new alien race. Mm-hmm. You know, and the one oh, guy the destroyers. Even the one guy. Well, the one guy comes back to the planet. Mm. Yeah. What happened to him anyway? He just basically comes in and just, I guess, absorbs into the world because you know there is that bar that has the aliens and stuff in it. Yeah, but he's well, like, oh, just, this place smells bad and. It's just funny. weird because you have that line like in like last week's episode, and then you like you don't see him at all like anywhere in this one. Like I think you, he's he was just a one off character. He's comic relief. Yeah, he was episode. just a one off character. I don't know. It's just like it doesn't seem like an alien that's able to blend into our world real well. But I thought it was really weird that the um, you had the white alien, mm. like the the white Martian in this this episode, mm. and that was the one that bowed, right. Was it the white? Martian? Yeah. Well, I thought it was the destroyer was, that was from the destroyer? crossover. It was a destroyer. Yeah. So it was the it was the like the relative or it whatever. Was the, the same white aliens Martian. from the invasion. Yeah. The yeah. Crossover. So, so the one thing I didn't like about this episode was the the fact that the doctor. Oh yeah, he's it's, basically stayed human even when he went to the other world. Like he switches over, like I think for one scene. But yeah. yeah. But he, I'm like after that, he's just in that form. I'm like that's just that was stupid to me. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. seems weird, and also just the entire setup's kind of weird. Like last week's episode was, yeah, there's a lot of weird little bits. Like there's some kind of funny lines, like I'm not a red shirt sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, it wasn't really the highlight of the episode. No. But actually, I thought this week's episode did really well. Like you have a lot of tension between pretty much fucking everyone. Yeah, with Supergirl at the center of it. Yeah, for most of it. I mean, you do have the uh, Jean and, like, Magan, like, story arc where, mm-hmm. like, he's trying to forgive her over, like, what she did, like, to, you know, in, taking place in a genocide, essentially. Right, I mean, she, and she's pushing she's pushing that new, the new story arc in there. Yeah. Of the White just, Martians are coming. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's setting up for, like, where it's going forward. And, like, I, like, that's... For me, this is actually the best Supergirl episode of the season because you have tension. They're all legitimate things. They're all out of the character's motivations. And mm-hmm. I don't know. Was there any one of these that you actually thought like kind of didn't hit like the way you, it I, should have? I just didn't understand fully why Supergirl is so power hungry in a way. Like she doesn't. I understand she doesn't want her friends to get hurt. It's almost like she. I don't know. Just way over. Is it, is she over overprotective, or uh, you know, I, 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 think, I was having a hard time mm, with that aspect. Everything else with, clicked. Uh, her and like John, or not John, or but Jimmy Olsen, Jimmy is Olsen, it's Guardian saying, "Well, well, I will stop you." And, yeah, you know, that's kind of like that. Yeah, it definitely like, it comes be, across as way more controlling than it, it should. Theoretically, yeah, right? she comes across very controlling to me, yeah, very much so, which is out of character for Supergirl yeah. in my mind. I which don't, don't know. Me wrong. Like, but, it shows her in like an yeah. intense place with live wire escaping early on in the episode, so it kind of sets up for her personality being slightly different, yeah. But at the same time, it seems like it goes to such a far extent that it becomes almost out of character, yeah. It, I don't know. I was and just don't wrong. like, you would like to assume, like, with her character, that it is coming from a place of being overprotective. Right. But it, it really does seem off in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, other than that, I enjoyed the episode. And, <coughs> yeah, other than their Monel revealing his feelings at the end and her going, eh, you know, I... I it, it almost came across like, I'm just so burnt out from well, this week. I don't know how to respond actually, to this shit. Actually, I, I looked at it a different way. It looked like she was getting ready to say, I, I have feelings for you too. I love you. But then, right after he said it, he said, "But let's just put it behind us. Let's forget about it." Blah blah blah. Mm. And then she's like, oh, "Okay, like I she guess was, we can do that." Yeah, like she was getting like, ready it's to say, "Like he cut himself off in yes, that scenario. Yes, like, he, like didn't... he cock blocked himself." 
Well, <laughs> essentially, kinda, what happened? <laughs> he more or less responded for her. He didn't give her the opportunity to state how she felt about it. Right, but I think because we already knew how she felt that she really liked him. Like, because we, we watched Possibly. that, we watched the end of that episode when she got kissed and everything else, and mm. and she really likes him, and you could tell he likes her, and it was one of those, oh, what's going to happen, blah blah blah. And when he tells her, then all of a sudden he says, "But let's just put it behind us, and we can still be partners." Mm-hmm. And he puts his hand up to give a high five, and. And she's like, uh, okay. And then she's like, yeah, we'll put it behind us. But you could tell that she didn't want to. You could, yeah, you know, it was just a very awkward sort yeah. of moment. Mm-hmm. Very much so. And he's like, see you see you tomorrow, partner. Yeah. Right, right. He was, Which is also kind of weird phrasing. But, yep. Yeah. So where do you think this leaves, like, Guardian going forward? Like, we're going to have, like, a Martian invasion, possibly. But he's still kind of wanting to go out there on his own, even though... You know, Carr is essentially against it, and he's you know intending to approve himself and all that. I think that's exactly what they'll play on. I think you're going to see him continue to be the guardian and continue to get in, maybe even get in Supergirl's way. A couple, you mm-hmm. know, you're going to see tension probably build between the two. Yeah, I think I think what we're going to see happen is we're going to see Guardian uh, taking care of a lot of bad guys, mm-hmm. but it's going to come to a point where he goes to try to say like stop something that turns out to be superhuman. Mm. Or whatever, like a super villain like or whatever. He takes off more than he can chew, sort yes. of thing. Yeah. And he's going to be, you know, held hostage or mm. wounded or something well, that's going to change his mindset a little bit. That all of a sudden now they're going to fight together instead of him on mm. his, like, being like a rogue. Well, you kind of almost have yeah. that in this episode, don't you? Because eventually later on in the episode, we realize Livewire's actually been kidnapped and that he goes in to rescue her essentially to kind of prove his worth as a hero and see mon do the same, and they also both essentially get knocked down by the scientist guy and essentially are held hostage there. Well, it seems to me like they're they're going to have the part of the story arc this season is about Supergirl having to accept help and have to accept her friends mm. being actual on the front lines with her. She's going to have to be okay with that at some point. Yeah, time. I mean, definitely kind of trusting them to take care of themselves to a certain extent or assisting like you kind of learning to take kind of you know the assistant role at some point with well, other people that they can take care of themselves and that you know mm. she's going to learn how to work with them as partners yeah rather than looking at them as weak and you know not you know always having to worry about them right, so. that's fair uh so how would you guys kind of grade the last few episodes for this because i think for me they're very contrasting grades like you look at Supergirl Lives, and that's a low C, kind of a very slow episode. It didn't really add a whole lot. But whereas, like, the last one, like, We Can Be Heroes, was probably my favorite Supergirl episode so far. Um, I would say, yeah, uh, you know, Supergirl Lives was, like I said, it was a, I don't know if they should ever put Superman or Girl and Lives in the same sentence ever again. Um just be like, supposedly like, that the title Supergirl Lives is a nod to the Superman film w- Kevin Smith never actually got to make. Correct. Right. Yeah, and it was I I don't know. I like I said I expected a lot more from Kevin Smith and maybe it was he didn't have a lot enough to work with. Um so I I give that one probably I'm going to split it between the two like you Aaron and uh, I'd give that one like a, I give it a solid C and then last week's episode I guess I give it a B. It was it was decent. Yeah, or this week's episode, I should say. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. So. Yeah, but I'm in the same boat. Um, I'm probably a little slightly higher. I'd probably give the Superman Lives episode a B minus. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I mean, the Supergirl Lives a B minus. And I'd probably give this one, this week's episode, um, closer to an A minus, maybe an mm-hmm. A, just mm-hmm. based on rating against itself, like rating yeah. Supergirl against other Supergirl that's, episodes. That's I fair. would give this one an A. Like, if you were comparing it to other, like, superhero shows, it probably wouldn't be that high, but Correct. for its own history. Correct. Like, if I'm if I'm going against The Flash, not even close. Yeah. If I'm going against Legends, not even close, but going against other Supergirl episodes, this is probably one of the better ones we've okay. had. Okay. That's fair, man. Um, so do you think what we're going to see going forward is just going to be kind of the White Martian arc for, like, the next three or four episodes, or... Do you see that expanding back more into like Cadmus stuff eventually? Um, I think the White Martian um, thing is going to be like the whole. It's going to be like the major arc for the whole whole second half. Okay. Um, and I think we'll see a bunch of little things in the in the middle. We'll okay, probably, like we'll, kind of little filler villains kind of yep. being introduced. Mm-hmm. All right, my God. Um, so going after that, we have Agents of Shield, which 
I actually don't really know that much about. So, um, yeah, he, he, the first half of the season, we again, uh, it's just what they're doing now. First half of the season was all Ghost Rider, mm-hmm. and then that eventually led into the LDM, which is what we're in now in the second half of the season. What is the LDM? Uh, lifelike model replica, or uh, something like that. I is it know. like a synthetic, like replicant sort of thing? Lifelike like model. A clone? Something I can't remember the D. Yeah, like, I don't remember the D. Duplicate one life model, but life model duplicate. Anyway, all right. So is that like an android? Yes. Okay. They, so they got these incredibly advanced androids now, which is how, with the help of the dark hold, they basically developed these more than lifelike androids, and mm. they've re- replaced Agent May. She's an android. Okay. Um, so is it kind of going to almost like a Borg storyline, like where you don't know which one's the real? Well, person anymore. I don't know if Borg would be r- quite right because the Borg, you know what they are because they got all their stuff on the outside. Oh, this, what these, am I thinking of? Um, um, but there was like synthetic robots that would take over like a character. Like, well, I, I would almost use yeah. it like Terminator. Okay, in a way you know you don't know who's who and and what's what, and it's it's uh it's it's there's been some nice twists though. Um, and Brian even pointed it out to me. I, I first I was wasn't real big on the twists, but now that we're in a couple more episodes in this season, it's the uh, the Doctor who just because he briefly looked at the Dark Hold is now obsessed with getting that Dark Hold back at any cost. And no matter okay. why, so well because this Dark Hold, I guess it gives you infinite amount of knowledge and it tells you what you want to know. Oh, so, okay. Whatever. So essentially, it's it's like the ring, and gotcha. uh, and um, like it, it calls out to him, it, sort of. Yes, thing. exactly. It's 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 power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. It's the quest for yeah, knowledge it's and power. Him trying to be omniscient, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. Even though he still has the best of tensions, at least in his head, he's he's lusting after this book, mm. and he's turning on his friends. He's turning on everything that he's, he's willing to sacrifice for. It. Yes, very much so, and it, it gets worse and worse as the season progresses he becomes a little bit darker every episode like in this last episode he actually jumped to the other side right because this side wouldn't give him the book so he could jump to the other side because now he's going to take it by force mm-hmm. right the only thing i don't like i really like this the whole that whole you know each twist that comes along mm-hmm. the only thing i have i don't like is the is the timeline mm-hmm. like the timeline for this happening is after ultron yeah like it it should not be that way because Ultron was the free thinking, you know, AI, yeah. AI, mm-hmm. and now now we have these that are doing basically the same thing. We've already seen this, so like, it's kind of duplicating the storyline to a certain extent. Yeah. So the only the only thing different on smaller scale. Yeah, because um, the only thing different because the even Shield, the whole reason why they they were trying to keep the the um, the robots or whatever what do they call them. Duplicates. The duplicates. Live model duplicates. Yeah, the live model duplicates. The only reason why they were trying to keep them on hush hush was because Shield outlawed AI. Okay. After Ultra. Ultron. Ultron. Okay. Right. But basically, we're doing the same thing with these duplicates that we did with Ultron. The only difference is, is that the doctor's calling the shot. The doctor's calling the shot. They're very lifelike, and they don't know what their actual programming is because they think they're human. Okay, because they have the exact memories of everything of their mm, their so, of their life, their real life counterparts. So it's one of those things like even they think they're the real person. Yes, until the very end when their programming kicks in to get whatever like there's some sort whatever of whatever whatever their mission is. Yep. Does the override actually cancel memories of the override? Like when they go back to it doesn't normal? cancel the memories, but like with May, it was all about getting the dark hold. So May mm. was May, all the way. In fact, May even finds out she's a robot and still stays May. And still stays May. Until the dark hold shows up in the picture, and then all of a sudden she raises her gun to Coulson, right, mm. and says, "Give me the book." You know, basically, like that's my only goal. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it was really for me. I mean, like I think it, it's interesting, but it's one of those. Like I said, it's the. It seems too familiar. Yeah, it seems too familiar. It seems like this should have came before Ultron. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Well, in a I way, mean, I think that's going to be one of those things where this is the issue with having kind of the TV universe and the movie universe kind of connected for Marvel and maybe why there is kind of a disconnect between the two company or aspects of the company yeah. now because it clearly seems to influence one storyline and not so much the other way. I'm right. beginning to like it a little bit more um, every episode. Uh, like at first I wasn't crazy about it and Brian and I kind of talked about it earlier on but 
Um, yeah, so every episode, for me, it's getting better. I, I would have preferred him to stay with uh, the Ghost Rider storyline. I would have liked that better. But um, so far, so good. So, All right. So. You guys want to give grades to the last few episodes? or uh, I'll just do it for so far this season. Um, okay. Right now, I give it a solid B. I mean, it, it's not... Yep, I'll get a B. Yeah. It's not it's overly not, great, but it's it's yeah. it's decent. I know is Agents of Shield like kind of hitting the point where you feel like it's beyond its like peak for the show, or I don't think so. I think the ratings. I hear the ratings aren't doing that great this season. I think the ratings should be better for what they're putting forward. With. Okay. Um, yeah, I would I would say that peak happened last year um, when they had. Um, Ward was still on the show, mm-hmm. and Hydra, and all that. I think that was part of its peak. Um, however, I don't think we've seen any kind of steep decline okay. this season um, with the Watchdogs. But um, like we got what you call it, Patton back. Mm-hmm. Right, what, Oswald Patton. Oswald was Patton was back for this episode. He got his origin story essentially. Yeah, I mean he played all three of his four. Well, he played three because his, he has a sister. Right. So they're quads. Right. Where originally we thought they were twins. Mm-hmm. And then they were triplets, and now now we find out there's quads. Mm-hmm. It's the sister and three brothers. Okay. So I mean that was kind of cool. And so they, eventually it's actually, just like actually having an entire just colony of people. Yeah. Actually, now there's five because Billy. Billy was on there. He died though. Remember, he got Ward killed him last season. Right, and they also said that um, they were part of the first Shields LMD project. Yeah. And they're like, "What? Really? Are you robots? No, no, we were technicians. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So nice. Yeah. All right, right on. Uh, so switching over to Gotham, we actually had kind of a lot happen in the last few episodes, and that isn't actually that rare for Gotham since it jumps around a bit. But this time, it's actually all kind of in the same storyline. So mm-hmm. we kind of have the cult of Joker and their attempt to bring them back, and then eventual success at it. Yeah. Um, so how... All right, so first question is, the leader of the cult is pretty much this understudy actor sort of character. Like, yeah, do you think he pulled off like the performance, or like was he like an interesting villain in his own right? He could have been. Uh, obviously, he's willing to go to extremes, even when at first he thought he didn't... He decided to go Chainsaw Massacre, um, mm. <laughs> which was a little disturbing for me at first for a TV show. Um, but it was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that the character was able to go to, the, to willing to cut off Jerome's face when he thought he hadn't revived him yet, yeah, and put it on and wore it around like well, he it was Jerome. Came, like seemed like that was a move out of desperation, though, didn't it? Like a little uh, you bit, had to but, save face, so but you took I'm, the other dude's face. But obviously, he's he's fucking crazy. I mean, oh yeah, yeah well, I mean, I the mean, entire Joker gang in this is kind of crazy, but. But yeah, I thought he did a decent job. I, you know, he was no Jerome. I'm glad they brought Jerome back, and I like how they intertwined that and him stapling his face on and the neck. Yeah. You know, it was just uh, I've really enjoyed these last two um, Gotham episodes. Um, I think they're incredibly well done so far. Yeah. Um, I thought and how they brought the Joker back and without his face on, it just yeah. a, a real nice little. Very demented twist to the. Well, the funny thing is, it. It, you can make an argument. It actually borrows from like the new Fifty Two version of the character because he does cut off his own face through and puts on a different one. Essentially, yeah, it's it's. Um, I I I've, I know nothing about the new Fifty Two, but um, but yeah, I I it's it's I almost I remember watching these and going, damn, if they had only done that in uh, you know with Jarrett Leto or something like that. It's, oh, like, you're sad. just like, oh, we don't want to see Leto again. Please, please just have a dude without a face well, if or they something. Had, well, not so much that. If they had just taken what Gotham has done and yeah, put it... It's weird, but yeah, you're right. Jerome into a as Joker a Joker on the, works the big so screen. much better than Leto did. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, that's, I found myself thinking that while No, watching. no, you're not wrong. Yeah. I, I'd actually be in the same boat with you on that. And that, and I have i didn't think I'd enjoy it as much, but I've really enjoyed the Nygma versus Penguin, Penguin dynamic, I know, I've too. always... It's been an interesting variation in the characters, I think. Yeah. So, and definitely looking where it's gone, like, in the last few episodes, like, it's definitely been... Fascinating where it's gone. I don't know. Did you have any interest in Jerome's understudy? Um, not really. Like he was kind of a boring kind yeah. of passive character. Yeah, it just seemed like it was very bland and 
like he was trying too hard to be the Joker, mm. and I don't know. It just seemed kinda... a little too forced. Like you even have those moments where he's actually quoting like Jerome from like the last like, right time yeah. Jerome was alive, sort of thing. Yeah. So I didn't really, I didn't really care for that. The, the, the far as Jerome and staple on his face, you know, staple on his face back on, and um, I like the the thing where they put up the the picture of um, the Killing Joke and the scene where. He's got Batgirl, and he paints the smile on her face. Mm. And then in in Gotham, they put up the scene where Jerome and he paints the frown on Bruce's face. Bruce's face, and they put them next to each other. And it's like even the hat is tilted the same way. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, so there was a lot of nods in this episode. Oh yeah, definitely a lot. But it's weird. This is for me. The last few episodes are actually starting to feel like Batman episodes to me. And that's what they've been saying is that these episodes have felt more Batman esque. Mm. Yeah. Um, you're actually seeing Bruce Wayne in more situations that are more mm. Batman esque. Being able to get like with the handcuffs, being able to you know use yeah. use the staple that was in his arm to yeah, which is actually kind lock. of a weird scene because on one hand like it's kind of cool, and on the other hand you're like. Um, for one thing, like, he takes his time, he really goes through, like, shaping, like, the staple in his one arm and goes through it, and when he drops that, he just takes the other one and he's just like, fuck it, don't have time, just work. Yeah, uh, act of desperation. But, yeah. But, yeah, I know what you're saying. But, yeah, it's just been, um, it, it's, it's finally, it's finally, we're finally getting the Gotham we've all hoped and wanted for, I think. Yeah. I, I've, I've been, I don't know, Brian, what do you think? Do you think we're finally there um, to what your expectations were? No. No. Still not there. Still not there. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the way this Jerome, this this new direction Jerome is, mm-hmm. like with the whole like. Um, I would have preferred a little bit more laughing, but it seems too. Really? He's, it seems too Heath, Heath Ledger. A bit more. It seems too Heath Ledger for me with the whole like, you know, with the, like, he's almost like slobbering because because it cut his face well, off, I mean, whatever. Definitely a little and bit the, there, and he's but... got like the, like you can hear it, like he's like trying to swallow back saliva mm-hmm. when he's talking. Like I just. I wanted more of the animated ba- animated Joker that he had been prior. You know what's funny is like to me the current version actually reminds me far more of the Nicholson version of the character, where you do really kind of have like the bit of the facial deformity. You still kind of have like the personality though. It, it doesn't really seem too strong for Ledger from like my how I'm viewing it. Yeah, I just I think it was just that I think it's his delivery maybe. Yeah, because it, it just seems like he's pulling a lot of Heath Ledgerism. Okay, like into, just kind into, of like in the body language yes, sort of thing. Yes, I, I could see that to a certain extent. And, I mean, with as well as Ledger's version is, it's kind of hard not to take something from that. Right, before. exactly. It's like it's, it's, as well as that was received. Oh, well, as it, would, it, was, it was. And that's what I'm saying. It would be hard not to mimic mm. something that was that good. Yeah, but it, I just think that the way this, the way he's been going this entire time, it felt to me like he was more of the cartoon version. Yeah. And and then this one kind of kind of went away from that. Yeah, He's, a little. He wasn't quite as grandiose as he was in the previous episodes. That's true. Yep. Yeah. It, it kind of puts him in a weird scenario though, because pretty much the whole time that's going on about how his head's still a little razzled and why is he killing Bruce Wayne? Well, that's the last thing he remembers wanting to do, which is well, kind of funny in its well, own he way. Well, he goes he, even he says to Bruce, he says, "Well, maybe killing you will kind of, you know, just restart things." Yeah, restart things. Yeah, up. it almost seems like. Coming back from the dead almost made him slightly more crazy than it had oh, yeah. originally. Well, he's going around stapling his face back on. I mean, well, I mean, come on. It was that or walk around without a face. Well, even st- well, yeah, but I'm just you know find a doctor or sew it up right. No, yeah. he's stapling well, I mean, it on and moving on. You know, it's he has a cult slash gang to lead into chaos, and he already blew up the power generator. I mean, right? Which time is, is of the essence. I love that part too. How he. Took out the power and yeah, like he's like just chaos like, room. You know? I am kind of mad about you taking off my face and yeah. blow up. Blow up. Yeah, yeah. I, but it was yeah. I I don't know. Gotham is definitely on the up and up. Um, I'm. I wish we'd had one more episode. I don't like these two episode story arcs. I've said that in the past too, and mm. it seems like Jerome might go away for a few when episodes. We get back. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. However, in this case. however, they are teasing Riddler, a full yeah. blown Riddler. So essentially, like we'll this, see. If that's teasing, the case, then I'll give give them. Yeah, you know. I mean, they're essentially teasing Riddler as being kind of at like just the full blown like villain version of himself. Yeah, he was pretty damn close in these versus Penguin. Oh, yeah. So now. It's only natural that he goes full. Yeah. full on so, how are you guys kind of enjoying like the Penguin versus Nigma storyline we kind of have out of this? Because 
like it's interesting seeing Enigma go all out and just being like wanting to take everything away from Penguin. Yeah, it that that part was cool. Um, I wasn't real sure when we started this whole thing, you know, this whole love triangle kind of thing, but mm. it definitely went in a pretty cool direction with watching Enigma systematically, you know, tear psychologically, physically, mm. you know, just tear Penguin apart. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, except funny. for the ending where, you know, Penguin, you know, says all those lines and he's like, I don't know what to do with you. I thought that was kind of weak. But everything I else... Know. Well, I think the thing I thought was, was interesting about that was, like, that was the one thing that actually surprised Nygma. Like, because he pretty much... he Nygma wanted to take away everything, even his convictions of, like, his own emotions. Yeah. It, and I thought that was, like kind of an interesting like cruel step like like you don't even get to die believing that your own bullshit well like you need to know like you're full of your shit well not only that but it was just like they gave penguin kind of like a redemption moment i i don't know it just was i don't know like it's for me it makes penguin kind of crazy but it also makes penguin kind of a character that's desiring like affection and like right, someone I, kind of loving him in its own way i don't know if like, they, that's it plays off that with his death of his mother as well yeah i don't know if they're trying to get us to feel sorry for him when nigma did finally kill him or shoot him and throw him in the river anyway well, i mean uh, we have so many alert. people coming back it's it's hard to right. say that's what i said i said nobody stays dead in gotham law especially but, if you're just getting shot in your side or some shit but still i was just i don't know if they did it to make us feel bad for him i, mm. I don't know but other than that i, I enjoyed it brian what do you think yeah, I mean, I've enjoyed this whole season so far. Yeah, um, I really enjoy the Riddler um, versus Penguin. Um, I thought it was really neat how he showed up in a green suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in this yeah. episode, the only missing was the question marks on the suit. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, supposedly, like in one of the next episodes, he's actually spray painting like question marks like in spots around town, right? That's Something like that. Well, I don't know about that. Or they is... just show like a big question mark over the town. Oh, so okay. Thing, right but, yeah. Yeah, I mean. And, I like I like the way you like the you said I like the way he was systematically just going through things. I thought it, you know it showed it showed that aspect of the Riddler always having you know a plan a, tedious a, yeah, yeah plan intricate plan. Um, however, and it also showed when the Penguin had he came back with that line at the very end, and Riddler was like, "What?" Like yeah. like it, like he was like, all mental at that point. Yes. Like he wasn't sure how to deal with an emotional response right. and it always happens to the riddler even in the comics or on old tv shows mm-hmm. or anything that, like that. Yeah. riddler always has that like he has that plan and then there's something right at the end of his plan that he doesn't foresee happening yeah like he, even though he has that really good understanding of like how humans work and function there's always that one kind of variable that just throws him off and it just kind of he, he doesn't know how to deal with it at first mm-hmm uh, so outside of those two story arcs, we do have kind of the small thing with kind of Selena and her mother, but it seemed like such kind of a small story arc outside yeah. of the fact it kind of sets like hit her against Bruce a little bit. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, her mom and uh, the Selena, I'm like, I don't even know why it was really in there per se, um, other than to maybe prop up Bruce a little bit and his... Know. Even though doing this thing for Selena and giving the money, even though he knew it was going to happen, mm. kind of being Batman esque. Um, and maybe, I don't know, do you think maybe that's meant to set up Selena Kyle for being more Catwoman like later on, or having her be like going back and hanging out with Ivy, even though she's like a full grown adult sort of thing? Uh, possibly. I mean, it's it's definitely created a rift between at least a temporary one between Bruce and her because Bru- she blames Bruce for the whole reason her mom came back in the first place and the only yeah. reason she came back. So Yeah, pretty much any of the pain associated with that is kind of placed on him to a certain extent. Right, right. but you guys also realize, I mean, the, the, this bringing back her mother also saved them when they went in to get the... Uh, the owl. The owl. Yeah, which is I'm sure there's ways of, you could have kind of written around that. Yeah. Right, which well, the other thing I was wondering, so they broke the owl. Yeah. Is there something in the owl? No, because no, the light, the, the previous yeah. episode, light hits it, and it shows like a map. Mm. It's a prism map. Oh, so okay. pretty much the map is now broken unless you can <laughs> adhere everything together without it like messing up the map. So they're going to get like a or partial map. Or maybe you get map. a partial map. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Okay. So. Kind of add intrigue to it. Um, yeah. I don't know. Was there any other real storyline arcs for this we had uh, to I cover? Mean, yeah, just Bruce versus, uh, we we touched on it, Bruce versus Jerome. We oh, get yeah. to see Bruce finally be Batman. Right, we, very the very first Bruce, 
Oh yeah, we actually the very go to the first... part where he's like trying not to kill him. Yeah, at that, towards the yeah. end of the mirror house yep. after he escapes. The very first Batman versus Joker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. essentially, essentially. Um, we found out wasn't that um, wasn't that Gordon's dad? Yeah, yeah it's his, uncle. Side, his uncle. His uncle. His uncle. His uncle. Oh, he said uncle, uncle whatever at the end. Yeah, I remember that. So oh, oh okay. It's his uncle. Oh, okay, so. so I knew it was a relative of. Jim Gordon, Gordon. That's and part Carter of the Owls. Owls. Yeah. yeah, which is interesting because we did that. He had that whole dad flashback at the beginning yeah. of the season, so this kind of ties in to that a little that storyline. Oh well. Also speaking of Jim Gordon and Jerome, he punches his face off, so that was kind of a fun scene. That was really funny. You know, I like how he just goes, "Ow!" Yeah. <laughs> he just falls to the ground. I thought yeah, cause I thought, you know, that was pretty funny because that's yeah. that's really how the Joker was, and like a lot of the animated stuff that we've seen. Yeah, it's like like it's very cartoonish. Yes, it's like, "Ow!" <laughs> he just falls over, faints. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, it, it was very cool though with Bruce versus Jerome and Batman. And yeah. this is kind of where you actually start this version's first well, rule. It's really where Bruce finally starts to act like Batman. Mm-hmm. It's the first time he's presented with the option to actually kill somebody with his own bare hands, mm. and he stops himself. Yeah, and, you know, and, that's and he just what, screams. Yeah, and he then even then there's that whole conversation with Alfred at the end of the season. You know, well, if you which continue, was actually kind of an interesting conversation. Yeah, like I thought that it really added to kind of the character. Sure, here. because you you know even uh, Alfred says, well, then you know if you continue to go forward that you have to have rules and mm. they're establishing the Batman you know golden mm. rule you don't kill yeah you know ever which I don't know if that was always part of the rule system because it seems to vary a good bit but it's definitely been the more contemporary take on it I was going to yeah. say in the modern one yeah very yeah. much now, so. now what about the uh, not that it's a huge storyline in this but what about the Gordon and Lee oh the back it, and forth there definitely still seems to be a rift like you have that bit where um She's talking to Jerome, he's like, and he's kind of catching her him up. And it's like, and she explains, well, Jim shot my husband. And he's like, Jerome finds that so funny. And she just, she loves telling Jim that, yeah, he found that hilarious. And you guys could probably you, you bond, bond over, that. over that. Yeah, right. And then, but then at the very when they go to get Jerome the last time, there wasn't that animosity there. Mm. No, it's definitely a love hate relationship. Yeah, like like it just was the, the whole animosity thing wasn't there. At, like right at the last one, like it wasn't the very first part of the episode, but in the last part, it kind of seemed to have faded away, and she could tell she was more concerned about. It does seem to kind of fluctuate a little. Yeah, you could tell like she's still torn. Like you could tell she still kind of cared about Jim. Yeah, because he's like I'm going to blah blah blah, and she's like, whatever she said, I can't remember what they were in the hallway. Yeah, well, she's she's gone through. Quite the emotional roller coaster. I well, mean, yeah, I mean, this season loans had her have like a miscarriage. Uh, well, that was the end fiance, of last season, but yeah, oh, yeah. but yeah, yeah. fiance that didn't work out. Well, New fiance, husband, husband that wanted to kill her slash got killed. So by yeah. Jim, and then, yeah. you know, she actually wanted Jim killed at one point before she realized she still loved him and then called mm-hmm. it off. So yeah, so, it's uh, the assassination off anyway. It's been a shitty year for her. Yeah, so she's kind of she's on the the edge of insanity as well, you know. Possibly, but I mean, how many like ex girlfriends of Jim Gordon can you make villains of this show? Well, you know, look at Bar. Yeah, look at Barbara. You know, who also so. is apparently now more or less going to be like kind of the kingpin of Gotham. Apparently, well, from how this is the queenpin, the yeah. queenpin underneath uh, Nigma. Yeah, I think well, Nigma's going to rule rule think, the town. Oh no, I don't think so. You don't think? I so? don't think Nigma has the interest in no, it. To be honest, I don't think he does either. He doesn't want to rule. I think he just had a he just had a game plan, and I think she wants to rule. And I think she has the force behind her. Oh yeah. Whereas Nigma was just yeah, Nigma's cards. a good kingmaker, but he doesn't really seem to have the interest. Like you see him Not go yet all anyway. out yeah. this time, just because he's pretty much going mad with rage of but. Joker. Yeah, I mean not of Joker, but of Penguin. Yeah. So this wasn't more of so of a takeover Gotham. This was just a destroy everything Penguin has. Yes. And Destroy that's that's where I think the difference is. Everything has, wants, everything. That's where I think the difference is. And I think, if I remember correctly, the Riddler never wanted to take over Gotham at any point during the Batman comics either. Not that I can call, but, uh, but I think a it was, lot of Batman comics I but, have read. But there was a lot, of, a lot of the time he just wanted to fuck with Batman. Yes. Or it's always about Batman. It, it, was, yeah. it, was like some, it was like somewhere down the line, Batman did something to ruin one of his things, so then all of a sudden it was... Torment Batman, blah, blah, blah. blah. Mm. So maybe it might turn into the Riddler comes around and he just torments certain people and mm. he wants to have his own little game inside yeah. of the, like you know, just, but not really take over everything, but like play he, people. 
He has like something he does within the universe where he's kind of making a profit or kind of screwing over the city sort of thing. Yep. Uh, so at the very end of this episode, we also kind of have the reintroduction of the fake Bruce Wayne. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, do you think that well, it's clearly going to play a part? But like, do you think that's going to play an arc for more than just like a couple episodes? Well, because it's clearly going to be someone who he they want him to take his place. Yeah, they could go the direction where the real Bruce Wayne goes off to train mm. for to be Batman, while this one takes his place, kind of thing. You well, know. do you think this is going to be a character that actually develops into a different character? Yeah, like, that one we're more familiar with. I, well, I don't think it, I don't know if it would necessarily be a supervillain or anything like that. I think you'll, if I had to guess, he'll because he's pretty close to being Bruce Wayne already. You know, he, mm. granted he's been trained otherwise, but I yeah, I think he. I really think my my what I want to see happen is see the real Bruce Wayne go off. Like he's supposed to, and and train. train, and this one just taking the place. Kind of takes his place for a while, and it might they might even keep him around. Like you got one who's Bruce Wayne, and one I don't know. We'll see. I I, th- I think this is going to be one of those. Um, he plays the villain. Mm. He plays the the antagonist. Yeah. yeah, he plays a doppelganger, and then last part of the story arc, he has his redemption thing, and then he dies. And then he dies. <laughs> Could be with Bruce Wayne right there watching, knowing that he's the other one's changed, and mm-hmm. that there is people can change, and then Bruce has this you know like that something that changes him towards the Batman more, you know, and he's it's very possible. Yeah. All right. So for the last couple episodes, where would you guys kind of grade these? I definitely give it an A plus. I like I said, I I I'm enjoying the heck out of these last two episodes. Where we go from here, I'm not sure, but. So far, so good. So, right. welcome back to Rome. Yeah. You, bro? Yeah, I mean, we're back. We're back up to the top part of the roller coaster ride that we were talking about in the beginning of the season. Yeah. We got real high, and then we hit real low. So, I'm ready for those <laughs> low episodes to start yeah. coming again because the Rome episodes seem to be pretty high. Yeah. yeah. And then we come right back with them with you know stupid episodes, and it's just like, <laughs> what the hell are we doing? Oh, Why are we? Mister we Freeze is back. Yeah, we were just going so high. Why are we going so low? Um. I don't know. The Matt I, I, Hunter out episodes were pretty yeah, decent. I mean, too. I mean, I've yeah. The whole season has been a lot better in season two, in my opinion. But mm. but I, I think I think we are going to hit hit a little bit of a lull. Yeah. If they, I can do, see if, that. if we don't have Jerome in this in a couple of next episodes, but but we got a break. I would say so. it's. I would say so far this season A. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say probably B plus A minus for me as well. Definitely with the last few episodes, seeing Penguin vs. Enigma arc kind of seeing like Jerome come back from the grave like kind of having an interesting kind of twist on where we go with the Joker um and honestly I'm kind of interested to see where you know what they do with Riddler in the next couple episodes as well as Barbara uh, just cause it's kind of hard to say where either of them is going to go and that's kind of interesting in it's own way so I'm I'm kind of looking forward to it alright cool well, Brian has Brian. I know you got to uh, go get your daughter, so I know you'll be leaving us yep. while we finish up uh, the next part of the podcast. But uh, I know yep. Mr. Host, I'm sure you want to thank him for. Yep. Thanks for being around. Oh, thanks for having me on. Yep, absolutely. Next time we'll talk about Arrow and some other DC Marvel stuff, and let you guys cover it while I'm gone. All right, and now to transition to just some of the movie news and things along those lines. Okay. Uh, we do have. Apparently reported by, what was it, Variety or Hollywood Reporter? Yep. Brian Singer has been uh, directed a Fox X-Men TV pilot? Uh, apparently, yeah. They are, I guess, uh, Mr. Singer, who's done all the X-Men so far. Uh, he's done most, most of them. them. Like, um, he's done, what was it, the first, sec- first, third, and then just the last one previous? Uh, I believe he did... Uh, or did he do all the original X Men? I know he did one through three. Okay, and, and then he did the last like reboots, like history one. Yeah, I think I think so. Or I have to go back Apocalypse. and look at that. Like I'm positive he did Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, I know he did Age of Apocalypse. I don't know if he did Days of Future. I think he did Days of Future Past. Mm. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So it looks like the X Men are going the way of Gotham as far as uh, okay. Uh, well, it's kind know. of interesting because uh, FX just picked up like the Legion show, and that's actually premiering this year as well. Yeah, I think it actually premieres either this week or next week. I yeah, think. it's it's um, pretty soon yeah. actually, and the trailer for it looked bizarre. 
It looks it, it it go wrong. Like it's bizarre in a good way, but it looks bizarre. Yeah, Legion seems to take on it. It's like the guy thinks he's constantly mentally ill when in fact he has mutant powers yeah. the whole time. I know? was watching a um, kind of behind the scenes thing on that, and it's actually talking about how they want the narrative focus to be kind of as disjointed as like the actual main character is. Yeah. So it kind of transitions a lot, and you're never really sure what's real or what's hallucination or powers. Right, or yeah. And it seems kind of interesting. Could be kind um, of trippy. So would this be going to, like, Fox's main channel, or would it be FX, you know? Um, I would think if they're going to do... If they're actually going to do X-Men Justice, mm. I would say FX. Because uh, you can be a little bit more gritty there. You can um, kind of be a bit more violent, yeah. Yeah, uh, now... I think we've had a lot of issues kind of having some, like... Holly or like comic shows kind of on the main three TV networks. Like it you really kind of limits their potential and what they can kind of do and go and sport right. the storyline. And the the reason why I think it it's ultimately going to end up on Fox is much like Gotham. Although Gotham goes pretty damn dark and gritty come to think of it, but mm. however, I think it's the X-Men title. Yeah. is why it'll end up on the main main Fox broadcast. Yeah, just cuz it allows channels. it to kind of get a lot more people into it. It's a wider audience. Wider sort of audience, yeah. It's it's the same reason they put Gotham on there. You know, yeah. it's it's going to bring in the big, you know, bigger ratings just by its name alone. People right. will turn, at least tune in. Well, for that's a little fair. While. Uh, like so, I know you enjoyed a couple of Brian Singer's directorial versions of X Men. Like, are you excited for him to kind of be doing the pilot, or I think, like what kind of influence do you expect him here? Yeah, you know, as long as he does it well and he does it justice, what I'm afraid of is I think they're throwing Brian a bone here because I think he's no longer going to be doing the X Men movies. And yeah, well, it's I, you know it, it's going to be interesting to see where the movies go going forward as well because you do have like the Days of Future Past Chronicle, but. It's hard to say how many of the cast members want to continue doing that, is, and is it going? We're going to have Logan clearly ending, you know, Jackman's, well, and Stewart's reign they're, kind of in. They're, yeah, they're now saying Logan takes place in an alternate universe, and it has nothing to do with the other X Men movies. Oh well, yeah, but, I mean, you can say that, but, but at the same time, like, if you're not having those two cast members coming back, it it's it's kind of the same end for those characters. Yeah, as I think we it's, know them. I think it's done for the '90s run of X Men. Yeah, you know, I think that's probably done. I don't think you'll see those characters back. The mm. first class cast, I could see continuing. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, uh, yeah. So I, as far as Brian Singer's concerned, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm hoping for the best here. I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to have a tie into a future movie series. Mm. Or if it's just going to be a standalone property. Yeah. Um, like, do you think it'll actually be a spin off of, like, one of the actual film forms we've actually seen? It's possible. Uh, I could definitely see them going off of Apocalypse because mm. Apocalypse kind of takes place in the 80s. And okay. I could see the X Men in the 80s, maybe. Kinda. It actually did work really well. Yeah. But I think part of the reasons is you look at, like, the old, like, 90s cartoon and it's. It really seems to take place in a very similar era, right. which is, I think, why it works so well. So I can see that uh, they it'd have to be an hour long episode like Gotham. I don't think you could do half hours with. Oh with God, this. no, no. Like if you were trying to do like a twenty minute show of, like at that point you're just doing the X Men equivalent of Justice League action, where it's just like go into fight scene, kind of explain why it's happening, and then just end it. Yeah, pretty much. So, so yeah, I think it, I've got high hopes. I guess somewhat. I just. I would rather see it on FX or FXX or Netflix would be would be prime, but um, but you know we'll see. I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Okay. So, uh, so after that we have Joe Mena Geniel. I actually it confirms Ben Affleck Deathstroke footage was a screen test. So I know it's actually the actor that was the werewolf from True Blood, but I actually. Don't remember how to pronounce his last name. Uh, I'll give it a shot. I'm sure I'll butcher the heck out of this. Uh, Manganiel... Mag- <laughs> Manganiello. Apparently we are not pronouncing Italian names very well. Manganiello. Manganiello. Uh, or at least, I, don't know. I assume it's Italian. I anyway, could be wrong. Yeah, I could uh, But apparently he released a uh, Tets footage for Deathstroke mm-hmm. on Twitter, I guess. Yeah. And it looks kind of cool. It has kind of the basic kind of dark black kind of orange things. Nice sword. Kind of more or less what you'd expect him to look like. Yeah, it's 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 a cool movie version of him. And it just shows that, uh, you know, that, that they, there was some screen test footage. and Or the footage that they released was not part of a movie because 
when they did that, they thought a Batman movie was already in production, and yeah. all these rumors came flying. But in reality, no, it was just a screen test footage to see what he would look like. Yeah, and that's what Affleck had released, and it mm. got blown out of proportion. But yeah, so well, it, it's there's it kind of seems like the uh, Batman movie coming up is kind of up in the air because there's quite a bit different things with it. Like uh, I know we had this later on the notes, but. Um, Mm-hmm. You also have the fact that Ben Affleck's actually stepping down from the directorial position for the film. Yeah, I think if if you are a DC fan, uh, this should be setting off about every alarm mm-hmm. and bell and whistle you have. Um, it it definitely something calls is, something to question. Something is going on with Warner Brothers. Uh, the Flash got pushed back. Well, that um, and we also have that is whereas the Flash um, the script is being rewritten for that right. film as well. I I have a sneaky suspicion that there, whether this is the change of uh, the same guy who's now running DC Comics is now part of the uh, the head of the DCU is taking over mm. and changing things, or if God forbid the worst thing is is the studio itself has decided to get involved and start rewriting things. It, it's hard to say where take that things goes away with it. from the DCU um, mm. guys, and I hope it's not the latter. I hope it's. Well, it's kind of hard first. looking back at the last couple of films from DC. Like, what was the greater presence and, like, what was actually kind of the result of the choppy editing? Like, it really could be WB. It could have been DC. It really could have well, gone from either. Yeah, it was... But it if was you look bad. at Batman vs. Superman and even Suicide Squad, there was clearly a lot of post-editing to where it really made the films much choppier than they had to be. And I, the only, like I said, the, what worries me though is it's, it's Affleck. Affleck's made a couple comments now where at first he's, they asked him, well, how's it going and a couple weeks ago? And he's like, well, it may not happen. You know, you got yeah. your star saying that and now he's backing down from the directing chair. And is Affleck, I mean, all things considered, actually has had some pretty decent directorial roles. Right. Like he's so... That tells me he's lost his pat. This is just me speculating. I have no evidence, but to me, he's losing passion for it, or that he's losing faith in working with the company. Yeah, something is going wrong, and um, yeah, there's, it seems like a power play is going on. And I don't know. We don't know who it is. We don't know what it is, but it's enough to make Ben Affleck say, "I don't want to direct anymore." Yeah, he's pretty eh. much dissing himself from the project, being like, look, whatever ends up out on the studio, this isn't my fault. I just starred in it. Right. It, that's 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 uh that's kind of a big thing. Now now it could just be it could be that, you know, he's got another project going on and mm. he had, doesn't have time to direct and he's got something else that he does want to direct and they're trying to work it out. But, to but at me, the same time, if you're with also the release of the news that Flash is being rewritten, it definitely right. comes across like either Warner Brothers or DC is trying to overhaul this. Yeah. Which, with the reception of the last two films, is somewhat understandable. But at the same time, it's it's definitely a sign that DC or Warner Brothers hasn't really found their footing with this. Right, and it, it, I mean, it sounds like somebody's making a major course correction. And but in some ways, we actually saw that sort of reaction after the release of Batman vs. Superman as well. Like, you pretty they did, much... They, they ordered the reshoots with Suicide Squad, and mm. we saw what happened with that. And even though Suicide Squad still ended up being a decent movie, I mean, mm. not great, but not horrible. Yeah, I mean, um, in terms of just... It was a movie that was much... It flowed much better than Batman vs Superman. It's well, like theatrical release. It, it, it flowed better, but it was. I think they changed that movie to to, to cater more to teen, yeah, to a teen audience than they did in a like a young adult audience or an mm. adult audience for that matter. Um, so yeah, I, I like I said, this is, um, you know, putting all those stories together. It just, I, I, <laughs> it sounds like the ship may be sinking a little bit. And mm. it, don't get me wrong, it could be a great thing in the end, but. Right now, based on what we know, and it leaves a, a lot more questions unanswered than it answers, and mm. it's it more or less both bits of news kind of come up as red flags for the projects going forward. Big time, yeah. It's it's a major uncertainty right now mm. in the DCU. The only thing that seems to be on track is Wonder Woman, and that just might be because it's just too late to change anything at this point. In yeah, stage. I mean, I mean, we also have kind of Justice League already shot. More or or they're working on it, but or you know like it, they've already released trailers. It's for as far as we can tell, it's mostly kind of done. But that's part one right. of like a two part thing. So whether the second part ends up that or ends up being changed or whatever that that's you know we'll have to see. But right, um, 
So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that goes forward and, like, what other news stories we kind of come up with about it. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, folks. That's yeah. that's what I say. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing I actually kind of find interesting about is uh, DC actually released, like, the Justice League Dark cartoon not that long back. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is kind of a standalone thing. It doesn't really have, like, I mean, it's kind of in the same universe, sort of, as, like, the rest of their cartoon movies. But none of their cartoon movies are really kind of in the same universe. Like, no, they kind of have their own thing. Their own yeah, genre. but, like, it's one of those things, like, you kind of can keep going into it and just be like, oh, no, this is its own version of it. And, and they're all actually, like, its animated universe is, does fantastic. Like, Justice League Dark's really good. Uh, um, I haven't seen that one, but I liked Son of Batman. Even that one didn't even get a really high ratings. But no, that but was good. like even that was actually pretty good. I actually like Damien uh, Wayne. Know, yeah, I yeah. think he's an interesting Spoiler. version of Robin. Yeah, I think so too. I really enjoy it. Um, but I mean, it's twist. it's it makes me wonder whether DC should push back trying to move forward with its ensemble films and like its shared universe and. You know, maybe just focus on, like, what direction they want to go with singular uh, films and see kind of what works for them there. Again, yeah, I, I agree. If it's a major course correction, then, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, again, I, I will just have to... We'll see what happens. We'll have know. to see kind of how it moves forward. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. All right, so after that, we have Marvel releases full Black Panther cast, um, and it has a pretty decent lineup. We have Chad with Bozeman. Yep. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, yep. uh, Lupita uh, yeah. Nyong'o, who was um, Star- she's uh, um, the the Maz Kanata, Maz Kanata yeah, uh, from The Force Awakens, does the voice. Yep. Uh, was also in Twelve Years a Slave. We have Daniel Guerrera from Walking Dead, Martin Freeman, who uh, was in the previous Civil War film. Uh, I believe he was playing some form of government official. Was he? I, I don't know. I have to look him up. Yeah. I, the like, name doesn't. Ring Martin about. Freeman, uh, he played... Um, it's like the Hobbit trilogy, I guess. Yeah, he was name. the main character in The Hobbit, uh, as well as... Sherlock, huh? Hmm. Yeah, he was um, Watson and Sherlock on the BBC version of Sherlock. Okay. Uh, we have Daniel Kaluuya, uh, who apparently has some upcoming films, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, that name doesn't ring uh, about Angela right. Bassett. Obviously, uh, there's, there's a good one. Oh, Forrest Whitaker. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Very but don't get me wrong, like, I felt like Rogue One really could have used Whitaker far better than it Well, did. I think a lot of his scenes got cut. That, yeah. that entire movie was really There's done. a lot from that first trailer you don't see. No. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in, in, and obviously also Andy Serkis is uh, going to do some sort of CGI character. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. So, like, that's essentially his... His forte, thing. yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, once again, Disney spares no expense, and it's an all-star cast, so at least... I'm, yeah, and it know. definitely seems like it's going out of its way to really focus, like, within the kingdom, uh, within the Black, Black Panther, Panther universe, mm-hmm. kind of focusing within Nation. So that should be kind of interesting, because it's a decent build, bit of world-building you can kind of create there. Well, yeah, because I know next to nothing about Black Panther, and I think a lot of people... Probably other unless you're a big comic book guy, I and I'm not. Yeah. Um, you probably don't know a lot about him. So yeah, I mean he's it's not a good, good up there in terms of names like Hulk or Thor. And honestly, even they were kind of smaller list characters in comparison to like X Men and Spider Man and all the properties Before, like Marvel kind of sold off. Yeah, like I, I wasn't sure what they were, what the hell they were going to do with Thor until they did the movies and they did a really good job with it. So yeah, that, that um, should be really good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually like you look at like Black Panther and like Civil War though. Oh, oh he's dude, badass was... looking, wasn't he? Oh, not only badass looking, but just like badass in general. Girl, like yeah. you have his general tone, demeanor. Just mm-hmm. you actually put him like in a little cat suit and send him out fighting. Man, he was kicking fucking ass. Well, yeah. Well, but to your point though, you know, outside of the, uh, you definitely get the feel that he's an African prince. But you know, oh yeah, you, you know. He comes across like someone that is in charge of leading people. Like he is used to that responsibility. Oh yeah, and and, and he's not like in a goofy way, like you know, coming to America, goofy way yeah. kind of African prince. We're talking like a legitimate. Yeah, like, he's legit you know, leader. Like if right. he was not running a nation, he'd be running a corporation, sort of something cat. kind yeah. of guy. Yeah, you know, very very has his shit together anyway, right? So, 
So yeah, I like the idea of uh, of this whole movie. I like the idea of getting to see his world, yeah. so to speak, and uh, a little bit more about who he is and where he comes from and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, so. it should be you know good. We're all looking forward <coughs> to it very much. Uh, so. After that, in Marvel news, we also have Vin Diesel says a Groot Guardian the Galaxy spinoff movie has been discussed, uh, which is kind of news, kind of, kind of. But well, at the same time, like Vin Diesel's kind of talked about doing other roles that ever really worked out yeah, too, like. He, Vin, he was talking about doing like an Inhumans role there for a while, right? Yeah, and Vin is he uh, he's he's really good with the uh, social media. Yeah, um, maybe not as good as The Rock, but he's was probably the first one to really use social media to his advantage. Yeah, <laughs> I think this might be Vin spinning some wheels, but I don't know. Like, if you're going to do like a he's popular, the yeah, character's got enough popularity. But what would you do? I am Groot. I am Groot. Oh, I don't know, Groot's like, cousin. I could see Groot. maybe having him do a voice for, like, an animated film that you want to do, like, direct-to-DVD or something. Sure. yeah. I couldn't possibly see that being, like... Well, what are you going to... What's he going to do? Go to the planet of the Groots? I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, you got to have... Yeah, so... I don't know. Like, I, I'm sure there's different options you can do for Groot as a character, but at the same time, like, outside... If you're not at least having a Rocket and Groot film... Like, that I could see. Like, you're just having Rock and Groot on their, like, solo adventure. Yeah, I could see Outside that. the Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy. Yeah, have Rock in it, yeah. yeah. But just Groot on his own, I don't really see it. Like, yeah. unless you're just doing, like, a short animated film of how he came to be friends with Rocket sort of thing. or Yeah, he's... Like... Don't get me wrong. I, when I, before I saw, ever saw Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't know how they were going to make a talking raccoon in a tree that only says, I am Groot work, but they did it. They pulled oh, yeah. it off and it spectacularly. so well. So, you know, hey, what the hell? Yeah, I think for a lot of people, Guardians of the Galaxy was that film that was really shocked. Like, a lot of people, because no one expected to go into that liking it. Yeah, I know, right? Um, And outside of that... uh, Back to some X-Men news. X-Men. We have Logan is apparently not set in the same universe as X-Men movies, says Hugh Jackman. But, you know, at the same time... Yeah, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but yeah, um, I guess it would make sense because... This movie's pretty gritty and pretty dark. Yeah, and I mean, it looks like it's pretty much going to kill off Patrick Stewart or Professor X. Not only is it going to kill off Professor X, but just... Probably X or Wolverine himself. Well, possibility, but more... The bigger issue is he even says all the mutants are gone. I mean, this is pretty bleak. Um, Yeah, most of the mutants are gone. Either... It doesn't really go into the why of it, but... Right, but this is what we've seen in the trailers, right? So you can't... If you want to continue the X-Men franchise, you you almost have to do it this way if you're going to do this movie. Yeah. You know? Like, unless you really just, like, this film does really well and you want to do, like, an X-23 spinoff sort right. of thing or continuation with it, which, if, just going by the trailers, I might be all right with, to be honest. Well, it depends. Uh, you know, Logan, it, this is like a drama, this is more of a drama action flick than it is ever an X-Men movie. I mean, this thing is going oh, to yeah, be... Oh, yeah, like, this is looks so much more, like, gritty. gritty. And it, it, when I say dark, I mean... It, Dark as and an not emotionally like, yeah, dark. Not like Suicide Squad dark no, where no. like it was just dark and it had no, like its moments. But like this actually feels like emotionally dark. Th- this which is, is like this is this is what you want dark and gritty to be. Pres- not right. over the top goth kid on steroid sort of thing. And honestly it's gonna have some action in it, don't get me wrong, but most of this movie is gonna be about Logan dealing with all the shit in his life. Yeah. The accumulation of it at that. Oh, and, yeah. and uh you know, him losing his, getting old, actually aging, and not mm-hmm. being useful. You know, it just... Yeah, losing probably most of the people he's ever known in his life. This is going to be Logan meets No Country for Old Men times 20. You know, it's, <laughs> um, yeah, it's from what I can tell anyway. So, yeah. And uh, at the same time, still trying to maybe redeem some of his past mistakes. Or precisely. Or trying to make a yeah. difference in the end sort of thing. Right. You know, so it's... Uh, yeah, like, I know we might end up talking about this on another podcast, but, and or if we have not already, but, like, I am way more excited about this film than I thought I would be. Yeah, by, from the minute they, re- I, I knew nothing about what they were doing, and then, then they released that first trailer, and I was hooked. Yeah. I was like, that's it, I don't care if it's being released in March or not, you know, usually historically February, it used to be January, February, March were crap months. Uh, now Not it's anymore. like it's year round. Like they're just pacing themselves. I think they're just trying to avoid the major blockbusters. But it, this movie, it has the potential to be awesome. Yeah. I, and, 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 and 
in a storytelling awesome way. Oh, yeah. Not even so much in action, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, so. don't get me wrong, the action scenes look cool, but just, like, it's the emotional aspects that really yes. have me drawn to this. This is going to be very heavily character driven. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. So, right. uh, so going into other news, uh, we do, and I guess this is actually our kind of final bit of news. Apparently, the villains for Aquaman have been cast. You have Yaye Abdul Mateen II has been cast to play. Black Manta in the upcoming Aquaman film. Okay. Uh, his only previous acting experience has been from the Netflix show The Get Down, and apparently he will also play a small role in the upcoming Baywatch film that's coming out in May, I think. Okay, that tells me nothing. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen The Get Down, like he plays kind of an asshole in it, essentially. Yeah. Um, they have like his main scenes essentially a dance scene, so it it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Yeah, that that um. I guess we'll see. Um, you know, Manta's kind of a big character to give yeah. somebody that's virtually an unknown. But um, I mean, it's a big Aquaman character. Well, just but from, I mean, also there's very few other Aquaman characters, even though there will be another well, villain in the film. I mean, it's, even from a little kid on, though, in in, in uh, Super Friends, I mean, Aquaman's main rival in the Legion of Doom was Black Manta. Yeah, so. he was the Legion of Doom counterpart for Aquaman. Right. Yeah. So like he's iconic and I mean even if you go into uh the Young Justice storyline, he played a kind of a decent role there as well. Right. And actually was kind of a bit more of a a more like three dimensional character than that than I think he was in Super Friends as well. Oh yeah, well Super Friends was pretty straightforward. But, yeah. Um so. so outside of that the film has also cast Patrick Wilson to play Orm the Ocean Master, who I believe is Aquaman's brother or stepbrother. Oh, okay. Uh in if the name doesn't sound familiar, he also played uh, Owlman in the previous Watchmen film uh, now, that Zack Snyder also directed. Now that I did like, I liked, uh, I liked that character Owlman uh, in, in Watchmen. In, yeah, even the Watchmen kind of fell flat. Um, I, I really think, liked that movie, or like, I liked think that character Watchmen in that did movie. well for what it, for the time restraints it had. Like, don't get me wrong, like, there is some senseless stuff additions to it, and there's some things that kind of undermine the original storyline, but. I think overall, that is a very hard film to kind of adapt into screenplay. Or yeah, or a it's a very hard graphic book to novel. graphic novel to adapt into a film because so much of it is just viewing the events from different philosophical point of views of that like character, and, right. like having that different perspective thing of it, and uh, it, it's very hard to do on film. And I, I think it was it's about as good of a film as you can get. Don't get me wrong; the graphic novel is admittedly several times better, but. Yeah, I mean it, it but, is. It did what it could. But for what that actor did for that for the album, yeah. I thought it was one of the the highlights of the movie. So yeah, he definitely was able to do the role pretty well. Like he actually gave it like that sense of kind of. Well, it was kind of it was an interesting character because he comes across as almost like a Clark Kent looking kind of character, and then he puts on the album and becomes Batman almost. Yeah, it, it's um, so it's 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 interesting. yeah, and you have that thing where like. He almost feels like more like himself as Owlman than he does That's, as his original person. Right. Like, kind of similar to Batman, but then you take that into like his real life. He feels almost impotent sort of way, and that's a weird sort of arc to go into. But it is yeah. kind of the character as well. But uh, yeah, so I thought the actor did really well with that, and so it, we'll see what he can do here. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm help, help, hopeful of that. So we'll yeah. see. Uh, so I think that's pretty much everything we have to cover for the week. It, I it, think it's, we did all right. Yeah, uh, it's, we've been gone for a while, so we went a little long today, but hey, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, so. I mean, we're a few episodes behind, and there's probably even more we didn't cover, so. No, but it's a good good welcome back, and we'll try to do it again next week, yeah. so. So, thanks for joining me, bro. Oh, absolutely, Aaron. And also, real quick, where can you find four Midwest guys if you like this podcast you can find us on by going through google.com typing in the number four midwest guys you'll find our twitter you'll find our facebook you'll find our youtube accounts uh our podbean account so yeah like subscribe like share. subscribe share and if you don't want to that's fine too hey it gets just some, it's an option yeah and, and hit some feedback we got a little bit of feedback on uh it was a while back, but on our uh, last episode of uh, Game of Thrones, we had a little bit of feedback, and it was much appreciated. So, do we actually have feedback we, on the Game of Thrones? We one? did, we did, and on we the, don't check those things nearly enough. We need to start checking them more often. But we was some uh, some constructive criticism, and it was much appreciated. So, um, I don't have the user's name handy right now, but we definitely thank you out there, and uh, we, we appreciate oops. it. And I will definitely be responding as well. I know you sent. Uh, I saw she actually left a second comment, but I haven't had a chance to respond because I had to work this week. So. Oh, okay. But we will be responding. So 
with that in mind, definitely reach out to us and leave us more comments. So, all right. Well, thanks for having or thanks for being on, man. Absolutely. Uh, everyone at home, have fun. Have a good night. Whatever. All right. See ya. See ya. <laughs>